Meet my friend Simon Conway Morris, an evolutionary biologist, paleontologist, and a card. <laughs> He's very funny. He's at the University of Cambridge. He's a prolific writer. He started out his career studying the Burgess Shale, and he wrote a book about it, The Crucible of Creation. He's also interested in life in the universe and life solution, inevitable humans in a lonely universe. He takes a somewhat of a theistic approach to the position of humans in the universe. He's also written uh, books about the runes of evolution, water and life, and he's co-edited The Fitness of the Cosmos for Life, another paradoxical title. Have, let's hear what he, Simon, has to say. My name is Simon Conway Morris. I work in the University of Cambridge. And what do you do there? Um, Ostensibly, I'm meant to teach paleontology, and I still do a little bit of that, but I have quite a wide interest in evolutionary biology. Are we alone? Well, I, I, personally, I suspect we are. You think we are alone? I um, why do you suspect that? Uh, that's more to do with the likelihood of intelligences evolving, and we can unpack this if you so wish. And then if intelligences lead to technologies, which again may not be inevitable, um, then in due course one would have technologies which would be interested in interrogating the world around them, aka science, but also ultimately exploring other parts of the galaxy in which the home star is located. Most of the people who are interested in the question, are we alone, uh, imagine, they're, they're not that interested in finding bacterial aliens, they're more interested in finding aliens with whom they can speak. Who well, are they benign, well, yes, but I can interrupt you. They, they, they won't be able to speak unless they have their bacteria in the gut. <laughs> okay. So do remember <laughs> okay. that it's not simply a monotonic thing whereby you know the bacteria are the launch pad. The oh. bacteria are integrated completely in any complex biosphere. Do you think something like human-like intelligence would evolve again? I think it would in as much as we have human-like intelligence of a sort, not only in our close relatives, which is unsurprising because of course we share common ancestors, but also notwithstanding your comments about deep homology, we find uh, analogous systems in the birds, famously the parrots and the corvids, but also in more remote uh, groups which certainly are evolutionary relatively distant, um, albeit still animals such as the octopus. I mean of course you've got to have reg regulatory mechanisms and if, to the first approximation of course evolution is lazy so it will re-employ these as and when necessary. Mm -hmm. But it's not a universal rule and what right, we do right see right. is if, if for some reason there's a famous example in the um, uh, methods of olfactory uh, recognition by insects where you would expect them to use a G-coupled protein receptor and indeed they do have something which looks exactly like a G-coupled protein receptor except it is patently independent. Okay, so let's talk about the Planet of the Apes uh, movie that uh, we both love so much. So do you think that something else will evolve to fill what is sometimes called the intelligence niche which we think we inhabit? I would imagine it's very likely, yes. Oh, how many millions of years? It's difficult to know. I mean, there's a sort of analogy which one can look at in the dolphins and the other toothed whales, and there, because the fossil record is relatively good, uh, I think, uh, re remembering crudely, that the intervals you're talking about are in the order of 20 million years, thereabouts. Okay, so you think if we have World War Three or Four or Five and we kill ourselves, that on the order of five to 30 million yes. years, something will evolve into this intelligence niche and start making cameras and telescopes and microscopes. Well, unless we are uh, utterly disastrous and effectively destroy all the primates, and of course in the case of the great apes, um, they're already in a very precarious position. But in other cases, amongst the monkeys, the populations are perhaps less threatened. So if we want to use that as our starting point, then if we assume, and this may not be correct, um, that um, ape divergences occur in the Miocene, and again, we're talking about approximately 20 million years. Is human-like intelligence a convergent feature of evolution? I think it will be. What do you mean will be? Because we don't know of other examples. And therefore one is making the prediction and science works on predictions. And why is it that on these other independent continents that are independent experiments in vertebrate evolution that we have not seen uh, evolution towards human-like cognition? Well, it's, it's a difficult question, but it may well be that if it happens the first time, it happens to be us and then we can't be too surprised it's us. Should we expect aliens with radio telescopes? In principle, we should. But if we have aliens with radio telescopes, uh, this, of course, is simplifying uh, considerably, then um, as the Fermi paradox uh, points out, uh, there doesn't seem to be any ev evidence of their activity. So do you think that's evidence that they don't exist? Uh, well, as we all know, absence of evidence and evidence of absence are, need to be carefully distinguished. And of course, being scientists, we're aware 
first of all, that our searches are being very limited and mostly very local. Uh, and of course, um, it may simply be that tomorrow, uh, most of what I've been talking about is completely redundant. 